Hey fam, I uh, came across this drag man right here. Uh, uh, him and the pastor there are going through their divorce uh, after nine years, of course. Uh, let's listen. Devon Franklin are going their separate ways after nine years of marriage. But the good thing is with, with this one, with my husband, the respect that I have for him is so totally different than any other relationship right. that I've been in. According to legal docs obtained by E.T., filed by Franklin on Monday in Los Angeles, the couple's separation date is listed as August 21st of this year. The reason cited for divorce is irreconcilable differences. It looked look like they got sort of like matching jaw lines. But Megan jawline is stronger, is stronger in the head. That's a whole man right there. You need to be aware of that, that that is a whole man right there. A lot of good body work fooled a lot of people, but still, look at that jawline, that's a man. The couple also released a statement confirming the news, saying, quote, After much prayer and consideration, we have decided to go in our futures separately, but forever connected. Adding their... And there they go. That sounds just like that COVID shit. You know, stay six feet apart uh, together, you know? <laughs> okay. Was, right. quote, no one at fault for the separation. Megan and Devon got married in 2012 after meeting on the set of Jumping the Broom. Oh, and I had spent enough time around her. We had made a movie together called Jumping the Broom. And I got a chance to get a, a friendship with her and see who she was. And God gave me the vision to see this is who she is. And she's for you. Despite the split. So uh, God uh, gave this one the vision that it was a whole man in a wig with implants. And that that was for him. Well. You see what God they're talking about, right? Because I know, I know didn't, uh, the creator of everything did not give a man another man in a wig with implants and said, this is for you. Uh, no, no. Both shared oh, tributes to one another okay. on their anniversary. Mm. Good. All they did was hyped up weddings for you. You know, and threw in a little Christianity on you. But this one always came out every time I seen it, looking like the Babylonian whore. You know, everything looking half naked, uh, always uh, promoting lust in the church, you know, and then giving y'all some kind of type of bullshit lines. And y'all was right over there. She, uh, she saved this old dude in a wig, you know, mocking the church, uh, mocking women. Okay. But this one right here. God done gave it. This is a fucking... Uh, okay. Shared this video montage with the caption, quote, To the love of my life, my husband, purpose partner, happy anniversary. Even more recently, earlier this month, Devon praised his ex's performance on the Amazon Prime series, Harlem. I'm such a fan of your work. I've read all three of your books. Camille Parks. How come all this shit be advertisement all the damn time? You know, you go and do a divorce and stuff like that. It's a happy, wonderful thing, but check out this movie that it did. You know what I'm saying? They never stop selling you shit. You know, everything they do is a fucking performance. You know, it, Can I call you back? Yeah, that's fine, Dr. Prude. I'll talk to you later. And this whoopee drag man right here, they should have stopped. They shouldn't have even tried to do this one. <laughs> they shouldn't have even tried to make this one into no damn uh, female. They just, no... Mm -mm. Sorry. He wrote on Instagram, quote, I'm so proud of my love, it, Megan Good. Like, She's one of the most talented actors on the planet. Now, you can't, you can't hide the man in them. <laughs> right there with that pose right there. Y'all can't see the man in them. Look at that neck and that jawline right there. That's just nothing but straight. Check out I'm a dude. Just check out I'm a dude. Planet. Listen. No, y'all listen right there now because I couldn't even get past this right here without seeing these shoulders broke all the way down. <laughs> I don't know what kind of man stuff is this. Okay, this look like a fake boy right here on us. I don't be paying no attention to what the hell they be saying because it's always bullshit. You know what I'm saying? But this one here look like it have the broke so shoulder syndrome right up in here, right here. Like I pause it, look right there. Yeah, that, that that appears to be a fake boy right there. Let's keep listening. How rational, loving we are. Mm -hmm. We are people who need help communicating. Devon opened up to E.T. about he and Megan attending therapy and why he calls friend Will Smith one of his mentors. 
What? Will Smith is another fake one too. It's another fake one right there. I don't know what this one is right here, but right straight by looking at the throat on this one right here, this one is another faker. That's all they put in front of you is fakers. I'll tell you some more bullshit. What this one's saying? Counseling help you all. Oh. Because I feel like you guys both have, are very rational people and have the tools to, yeah. but why did counseling help? Communicating is the hardest thing. Why? Because there's a lot of stuff that's deep down on the inside. I hear Will Smith. Yes, what's deep down in the inside is that it's transgender's abomination, and you got to hold that deep down on the inside while you be out in front of the good people trying to fool and trick them all the damn time. It's a lot. It's a lot to deal with. And Jada Pinkett Smith talk about that. Like, we go to therapy individually and then come together. Oh, yeah. To, oh, yeah. you know, to figure it out. Yeah, no, it's, it is, that has made such a huge, huge impact in this Will's. Is you know, here. I mean, uh, mentor and a friend uh -huh. and has been very helpful to me in terms of helping me do the work that I need to do as a man yeah. to be a better man to be uh, a better husband and some issues they don't you know I don't know what kind of therapy they got out for uh, transgenders abominations lying to the damn people what kind of therapy they have out for those ones to be better men and, and shit like that but uh, don't even pay these ones no kind of attention or nothing about no storylines and nothing this bullshit it's just a fucking show okay it was married to a drag man. They played church on all the damn people running around. They talking about they love Jesus and everything. And they saved and going to glory and all of this bullshit. Okay. And it's a whole dude in the wig. And this one right here with the broke shoulder syndrome looked like a fake damn boy. You know, had the damn people confused all the time. Is the pastor gay? The pastor is a full on sodomite. Okay. Full on sodomite. Because Megan Good is a full on man. And this one right here, look, at it looked kind of broke down. Yeah, like a fake boy. I'm tired of them. I don't like these ones. That you're trying to sort out collectively our individual issues, right? Like my trauma, I bring that to the marriage, but I still have to have a path to work out that trauma, right? And sometimes... I uh, shut up. I mean, th th that's how I'd look at them. Just shut... What up? Shut up. What the fuck is you talking about? I'm bringing that trauma to the marriage and I'm realizing, wait, wait, the issue we're having is because I haven't been doing my work. Or the issue we're having because she hasn't been doing her work. So having those individual therapists really do help. I guess they got to work real hard uh, with those therapists and continuing to lie to the damn people and put on these performances. <laughs> that's all. The, that's all they do. And of course, you know, they can't just, you know, be going through a divorce and, you know, uh, Megan and the sodomite dude going through a divorce, you know, and and that's it. No, they got to have uh, backup storylines, some side stuff. Uh, you don't know because they they both might be coming up with a separate show or a reality show or something. So they got to keep you interested in the divorce saga and shit. OK, so look, look, look at this. What's up? It looks like I'm on my back porch, but I'm actually on the set of my new TV series called Kingdom Business, which I'm doing. Uh, see what I said? <laughs> see what I said, y'all? Look, I'm watching the video for the first time, too. Uh, I just seen them sitting up there talking about, I just seen the title. But didn't I say that? They're coming out with a series or something, so they got to keep you, you know, uh, occupied with something. That's why they came up with this elaborate divorce now, because uh, this one got a series. <laughs> for BET. Mm -hmm. Isn't this amazing? See? If, you, if I didn't tell you, you'd never know. See, mm -hmm. it's interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Movie and TV magic. Mm -hmm. Right here, looks like I'm in the back porch. Right there, you see it's all made up. Why is this important? You see what they do. They give you a little uh, storyline to grab your attention, and then they put you right on to what they want to keep you focused on. Bullshit. Like, we give a fuck you in a studio, or you got a series. Or you married to the drag man. I mean, like, who cares about none of that? But that's how they grab you. Because you already love it. So you're concerned now that it's getting a divorce. And while it's getting a divorce, it's got a whole new show for you to get engrossed in. It's the same pattern. They do the same shit. Come up with some kind of something to grab your attention and spice off into a reality show on your ass. <laughs> because, see, when I was young, you know, doing a... Uh pathfinders and mm -hmm. uh you know <laughs> be, being involved in the after uh sabbath programs at the time it was called ay and all of that you know i had dreams that even with our faith that i could make it here in hollywood and uh, a lot of people said oh uh oh he about to bring jesus to hollywood now because you can be you know pastor pastor sodomite and bring that right on into hollywood because god is going to bring the Bring you right on into that. I guess if God is giving me the drag man with the implants, well then, hey, there you go, because you're going to have to get a drag and throw it on your arm. 
uh, to go on into uh, where this one here that done took it to Hollywood there. You're the, God, yes. Well, you can't be successful in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's not going to happen. And here I am mm -hmm. producing a major TV series for one of thank the you, biggest yes. networks in the world. Mm -hmm. And earlier this year, I produced a movie mm. for uh, for Disney um, oh. that'll be coming out, which oh. is all about the creation of Flaming Hot Cheetos. Why do I share all this with you? Why? Because literally, I'm standing in what is the power of faith. This is what faith can do. Nobody believed that this was possible because it, they... See, this is the bullshit right here to piss me off with these here. Um... Uh, you know, these spiritual leaders ones, these ones that get right in front of you and, you know, start talking about what God did and the faith of loving the God and every damn thing. But I still can't get past how the dra God brought you to a drag man <laughs> in a wig with implants. And now you excited to be uh, doing something for Disney. Di Walt Disney, the pedophile, what own pedophile land for the children? I mean, like, what the fuck is going on? And this one, everything come right on down back to uh, the spirituality and everything in the church and the, reli and the religious shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm just sick of it. I mean, like, okay. They hadn't seen it. But just because they haven't seen it doesn't mean that God hasn't seen it for you. Mm -hmm. It's really important for you to not allow anyone who has not seen what you've seen to tell you what is and isn't possible. And let me tell you something, that all of this... You know, from day one, I started as an intern uh, working for Will Smith when I was 18 years old. And in that intern... Oh, all I heard was, uh, you've been a down with the Sodom. I look like they had raised you up in Sodomisms and devil works and shit and uh, transgenderisms and abominations and shit. That's all I heard. Uh, what did, what did y'all hear? The Will Smith? The devil puppet they threw on us from a baby, like, age? What showed you that it was abominable the whole time as it started out? What? Okay. Ship interview. I told them, I said, listen, uh, I'm happy to take the internship, but I won't do it if it requires me to work on the Sabbath. And they were like, the okay, you know, we'll that. figure it out. And that was when I was 18 years old. Mm -hmm. 25 years later, mm -hmm. I have never worked on a Sabbath. And 25 for seven, you know, and 777 is the hoax code line and all this bullshit. He's just lying. You know, this is what kills me with them. They get, look, look. Try to look straight at you in the camera and just run down that whole bullshit line to you. And then, you know, and you just be believing it over there on the other side because you don't know no better or nothing. Or, you know, you want to be like everybody is, you know, like you and nice and loving and care. These motherfuckers don't give a fuck. This one right here pulling on you, trying to talk, tell you what God is and what God has given this one. And, you know, and you, can't you see what God has given it? A drag man in a wig? And now he's doing stuff for Disney? What? Our creator of everything don't like pedophiles. Pedophilia. That is not of the of the creator. I mean, like, what the fuck is this one talking about? What do y'all hear? Okay. I have made huh. movies in Beijing. I've made movies in London. I've made movies in Canada. I've made movies here in the United States and never worked on the Sabbath. Why? Because I made that my commitment and God has honored it. You do not have to compromise to get any sort of recognition. You can Yes, you do. You got to compromise to get all of the working at the Disney productions and shit and hanging up next to the Will Smiths and uh, up there on the world stage. Oh, you got to compromise uh, everything, uh, your free will, your soul, uh, all of that. You know what I'm saying? You have to do all of that and then get you a little drag man with some implants on in the wig. If you a dude, and slap that right on beside you and just walk on down and be proud in the name of their God, in the faith. You know what the fuck? Okay. Do what God has called you to do. But the key is you have to do it the way he's calling you to do it. You can't do it the way that's right. This one talking to his friends. You got to do it correctly. You got to, you know, do it the way to do it. Keep the abominational lie going. You know, keep the masses engrossed. You know, keep them believing. You got to be believable. You know, they got to believe it. You know, if you, they, if you, if you can't make them believe it, hey, there's no use for you here in devil them on the world stage. You know, they don't listen. You your mom it. wants you to do it. You can't do it the way your father wants, your brother, your sister, even your pastor. Mm -mm. I dare you to not only dream, but to then go after the dream. Because so often others are trying to dream for you, but you are the only one that can dream. And your dream is valid.
And your dream is powerful. And okay, dreaming, 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 dreaming. You need to come up out them damn dreams and be in reality. Because it's the dream leading you to the damn vaccine and your dreams and you see Omnicron and shit. You know, they control your dreams basically because everything they give you the fuck to see every day is they shit. So what the fuck is you dreaming about? Omnicron? The pandemic? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, stay the fuck out the dreams and shit and look at the shit in reality. What's going on in the world? What's going on around you? You know what I'm saying? You know, they always want you to sleep. Sleepwalking, sleep like, sleep state, dream state, you know, in the faith, you know, running behind this religious shit, you know, and I don't like these ones because they're not talking about the creative of everything and you don't need nothing like this right here with a drag man on the side of it or it itself being a drag king, you know, telling you about the creative of everything, you know. Your dream is truthful. Shut up. Please listen to me. Please shut up. You are not on this earth to become what your parents want you to be. You are on this earth to be who God has already created you to be. Some dreams may put you in direct opposition with the very people you love. But let me tell you this. If you love God and you do what he's called you to do, don't worry. They'll get there eventually. So many people. Talk. This one threw up the devil horn, the balfour med, gave us the one eye symbol and a big smile <laughs> All while wearing the black and white. And I'm, I didn't miss them bricks during that walkthrough. You know what I'm saying? You know, we can't let nothing pass us by. We cannot get sucked up in their little stories. And this one here ran down some bullshit like it was in the church, like that Joe, Joella Osteen, you know, some little dumb scenario and shit. You know, now we supposed to be in gross. Now we're going to be watching that show right there because that one is in the spirit. You know what? <laughs> oh, me. Oh, you can't do it. And Hollywood is Sodom and Gomorrah. It's the devil's playground. And you gonna That's exactly what the fuck it is. That's exactly what it is. And this one right here is one of the main characters in that play. OK, in the story. OK, look at look this one right here. One of the main characters now. And it wants you to pay full attention to it now because, you know, I got to avoid the Sodom and Gomorrah in Hollywood. And this one made productions with Walt Disney. Is that the king of the king of the uh, of the pedophile? Got a whole land for the children to be snatched. What the, what the? Who's your faith? What? And here I am making content that's uplifting the faith. Y'all know what the devil horn is? That was what it was uplifting in the faith right there. So I share this with you for you to be encouraged. You can do all things through Christ you who strengthens you. got a twitch you. in the eye and okay. You got to be disciplined. No discipline, no destiny. Right now, if you're listening to me and, you know, let's say you're a little bit younger, you can't keep your, you, you ain't doing your homework, you can't keep your room clean, and your parents keep asking you to do it and you won't do it, but you have big dreams, mm -mm. no discipline, no destiny. If you tell them to get the Christ to do it in the faith, you know what I'm saying? You know what? If you're listening to this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, I'm gonna let it go. <laughs> you're a little bit older and you're listening to this, you know, let's say you're in high school and whatnot. Listen, this destiny and discipline go hand in hand. So if you're not getting up and if you're not studying and you aren't showing yourself, you aren't showing yourself to be ready for what you're praying for and believing for, it may never happen. Not because it wasn't ordained for you, but because you didn't have the discipline to do it. I need you to know that every dream is going to require discipline, it's going to require hard work, it's going to require prayer, it's going to require everything in you to be everything he's created you to be, but it's possible. Jesus didn't create you to be anything, you know, you know, you were born, uh, uh, given life uh, by the creator of everything, which made all of existence, you know, you don't need one to come out and tell you how you should be doing it, because, you know, you, you're one with the creator. Uh, there's no way to block that. I mean, you know, there's ways to block it, but you know what I'm saying? There, before you go ahead and get your little blockage in you, there, you know, you, you're directly connected. You know, you don't need nobody else to get up there and decipher shit. Uh, that's what the missing link in every damn thing. That's why everybody ready to go fall down and die for a book, <laughs> you know, and a cross. They forgot. Because the fuckers like this right here, pushing the education and the studying with the discipline. I want you to be disciplined in your religion and in your education. Disciplined in those schools and in those churches. Discipline. Keep doing it over and over. Discipline it. Di di so, 
I want to let you know what God can do when you pursue what he put in your heart. Mm -hmm. And absolutely, the greatest champion, <laughs> the greatest, greatest champion that we've ever known is Jesus. Why? Because he died on the cross for our sins. Get the fuck out of here. Nobody can die for your damn sins or die for you. So now all of a sudden, uh, this Jesus and did all of that. And they wrote that in that little book, uh, the Balfamist Holy Book, that no one could die for nobody's sins. And then y'all forgot that part. And then now Jesus did it. You know. <sighs> Jesus is the abominable God because uh, nothing but abominations represent Jesus. The abominable God. And the gay flags is right on the church where Jesus is at as well, right? This Jesus is at the churches in his name with the gay flags. And every damn thing. What the fuck is going on? What y'all see? What do y'all see? It, it and when we accept Jesus as our personal savior, I, he takes That's how you fuck up right there with that accepting shit. You know what I'm saying? Stop accepting all the bullshit. The fuck? Why you accept? You can't be accepting and inviting bullshit and demons and wicked enemy entities and all that shit. Stop inviting shit into you. Okay? Why in the fuck they got to be all up in you? No. Don't they all tell you that? Invite it in. Invite it in. You ain't never asked no question. What the fuck is you inviting in? You. Nothing. Whatever need to be in you is already in you. Born with it. You ain't got to invite nothing in. That's how they fucking y'all up right now. Injecting shit in now. Y'all so used to inviting. <laughs> Just to another level. And I'm here to tell you, you are a champion. You have already won the battle that you're in. And one of the greatest battles you'll fight is the one with yourself. So I chat. Well, that one is telling the truth about that. You know, you got to bam yourself. You got to bam yourself. Question your own self. You know, don't be afraid to question what you've been told and shit. No, no matter how adamant you stood by it. You know what I'm saying? We all, we all got fooled in the game. <laughs> we all did. We came at a disadvantage in this motherfucker. And if you can't see daily how we being manipulated, when you turn on your TV, what you see? Every shit that they want you to see. Simple as that. Everything that you see is what they want you to see. <laughs> These fuckers. I hate them uh, pulpit bastards. Okay, so uh, Devin back there was supposed to have been telling us, you know, why. Why he filed for divorce and everything, but... All it told us was about the, the series that it was doing and all the productions that it made. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and all the movies and stuff. That's all this one showed us and told us. And now, this one over here, jumping up and down about the happy video, because it's happy it got divorced. <laughs> They're going to keep you. Keep you engrossed. If they don't, if they don't stop playing with the damn people with this thing here on the side, <laughs> this what they think all the damn black folks look like. This one right here with a damn colored p cotton puff on the top of the head. Just go ahead and spray a cotton ball and throw it on the top of the head, and that's the black one right there. You know, and looking at the damn. Why they got to be hollering at us all the damn time? Why? They're supposed to be funny and stuff. This is the scariest shit I've ever seen right there. It look like a damn horror show. Dudes just jumping up and down and shit. Grinning with wigs on. Howling. I'm scared a little bit. That kind of terrifies me to look at that. Ooh. Some men might be
Okay, how much is this? No, nobody knows. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't know they was doing this. Mm -mm. I did not know they was doing all of that right there. I'm sorry. This is the end mm -mm, of the video. Please mm -mm, stop. No, I'm sorry. Ooh, ooh, sorry about that. Well, I was going to end the video after that howling show, but then <laughs> Sheila popped up and I saw this image right here and I'm looking at it now and I'm thinking uh, this most likely is the true image of Megan Good right here <laughs> and the Devon <laughs> you know that's what caught my eye that's what y'all need to be uh, looking at when y'all look at these Will Smiths and Jada Pickett's and you know and Beyonce's and Jay-Z's is this image right here because that would be a strong man in a wig holding up a breastless one because that's 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 what we see uh, and let's see let's see again a few seconds oh, ladies and gentlemen anybody want to tell me just what in the Travis and Trina trading places is going on here and this one, another truth in plain sight, because Travis and Trina are both are transgenders. Uh, yes, they are. Thanks again, to Sheila. But look at this right here. Let that that image right there on the left uh, sink in right there. Uh, there you go. Your Megan and your Devon. And your your Jay-Z and your Beyonce are right there. Mm -hmm. Let that sink in. <laughs>